begini. Yes. Hey, Mori, <laughs> when I'm waiting in here and I hear the guitar on the street and at the door, I'm happy. It's you, I shout. Good day, good morning, good evening, wherever it is that you are watching from, and welcome to this episode of Beyond the Story. When I tell you about today's Chinjay Kasa, Chinjay Kasa Nyani, because if you are a thespian, then you better listen carefully. I have the maestro with me, Ukama Umpenu and I'm talking about none other than Mwetis Shabak. Budam? Yeah, Kunjash. Pelila Kondoyo Boyens. Maybe I could do it because you love and go with the It's good to be here. It should be. Um, yeah. How long has it been again? Uh, as in? Uh, you are not a stranger to the stage, Kalok, especially the market theater stage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I remember the last time that we spoke, I actually facilitated a dialogue of Gamashell when it was at the lab. Yes, yes. Was that the last thing that you did with us? Uh, yeah. That was the last thing I did at the market. But it was last year. That was last year? Yeah. <laughs> it can never be. It can be. never be last year. It was the other the year. The other year, right? Last of last but year. But it was, it's a most recent uh, thing, thing that you yeah. did with us. Yeah. Uh, and now you are back with, with Blood Knot. Well, now I'm back with Blood Knot. But I'm, I mean, it's not just being back, back with Blood Knot. It's being back to theater, like, yes. on the space, you know, because I disappeared for a couple of years. Mm. I went to soapies and stuff, so, yeah. Tell us about that disappearance. Why did you disappear and why, why did you decide to come back? The thing is, uh, at that time, I was doing the head and the load with William Kenridge, so we were touring more overseas. Okay. So that took me away from the theater scene for some time. So when I got a call and I was overseas yeah. in, in an apartment in <laughs> Lower Manhattan, <laughs> I was performing at the Amar in New York. Nice life you know. problem. So it's big stuff. <laughs> yeah, so I was performing yeah. there and then I got a call from home that said they would like to have me on Rhythm City. Mm. And I was like, I've never done a soap before. And they said to me, it's a big part. And then I took it, you know. It's like you were hoping that six months down the line you would mm -hmm. be done. And then a year passes, another one, another one. And then you realize that you are in too deep. <laughs> <laughs> and what what informs the longevity of your of your of your career? Because you never stay for a short time in that way. You yeah. always like stay for a pretty long time. What informs that longevity? Do you I, think? I don't know. Opinion? I don't know. Probably in my opinion is that I'm the most disciplined actor to begin with. I'm very disciplined. Yeah. You know, when it comes to the work itself, you know. So I really put time in it. And I really make an effort in making it. And, and most of the time, what tends to happen is that people would not just want to be me to be part of the cast or anything. Mm -hmm. So it becomes sort of like a collaborative space as well. So mm -hmm. you end up ending, ending up contributing into the work and stuff. So that, in a way, creates a bit of dialogue between me and the director I'm working with at the time. So I make sure that every time I work with the director, we kind of like in a more collaborative space mm. because then it means I care about the product at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah. Oh my God, and I think that's what makes you almost different from the other actors. But yeah. before we go forward, I want to know when did it start? When did the theatre performance bug bite you? Because if, I remember um, reading that you were from Umlazi, I think. Uh, Guamashu, 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 and yeah. then you went on to go to Guanyamaza. Oh, oh, what, what happened with me is that uh, I started off saying that my mother is from Guamashu, mm. but my father is from Mbombela. Okay. There was no Guanyamaza then. Yeah. It was Mbombela. So the Mbombela that we know of today, it's actually a small portion of the city that was designed for blacks only. So it mm. was it was like your kind of Doran Fontaine, Sophia Town kind of vibe. But ours was different because there was not mixed. It was just a bad settlement for black people, mm. you know, but in town, mm. you know, it was so bad that even they used the bucket system as well. Yeah, yeah, that's how bad it was. And it was a slum, right? 
So my father was sent to Deben to go and study. Mm. And then that's how they met with my mother and stuff and stuff. So all of us in the family, the, my, my siblings, the four of us, we were all born in Deben, mm. right? Because our mother was there. And uh, until my father could afford mm, Lobola and marriage, yeah. because my father's father was a priest and my mother's father was also a priest. Oh. So there were very strict rules. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I was born in Deben. So, but then I moved when I was very, very young. I mean, I was, I think, six in 78 when I moved to Nelspreet uh, to live with my paternal parents now and my father because he started working on the side. Mm. And then uh, he has to take my mother with him. And yeah. then the whole thing has to be done, the lobola, the marriage and everything. And then we could move. So I became the first child of theirs mm. who stayed with them like permanently, okay. full time. My elder brother was still there. My younger sister was still there. And my younger brother was also back there in Devon. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And then, uh, and then on the other side of my family, which is my father's side now, um, it's quite a big family. You see, my, my mother's side is only three sisters. Oh, yeah. Because our uncle, we never know. We have never seen him, you know. He disappeared. Like, he went to school one day and he never came back. Mm -hmm. But the, the rumor says that he was involved in student politics. So uh -huh. he ended up skipping the country, but we didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we never saw him again. Okay? So Up to date. I've okay. never heard anything about oh, wow. him. Yeah. So... Then now I would go and visit, you know, between the two uh, cities. Mm. So I would be in, in, in Nelspreet with my family there, my father's side. But I would still visit the other side of my mother's and stuff and stuff and stuff. So both sides, they did play a role. Mm. Because on my father's side, the first place that I saw were protest theater plays on tapes. Uh, because they the were, time. Yeah, 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 they were involved very, very hugely in the ANC, UDF type of movement ah. you know, during those days. And then uh, on my mother's side, uh, across the road is the famous Nokwe house. Mm -hmm. If you know, like you are from Guamash, you would know that uh, on the other side of Ndombela Street, which yeah. divided my section of the township and the Nokwe section of the township, that's where a famous group called Amajiga yeah. were based. Oh. So I used to go to, when I visit yes. Guamash, I used to go and watch Amachiga. But when I'm at home back in Nelspreet, I will have access to plays mm. on tapes. Ah. Yeah, and political material. So uh, my uncles, you know, because we're putting it in English, mm. abo, uh, uh, my fathers, they are not my uncles, yeah. they are my fathers, Abu yeah. Baba. Yes, into Yes. Yeah. You know, they, 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 they were also involved in a youth movement because in those days you cannot just bring the youth together mm. and just politicize them for all the time, you know. Yeah. So they had like things like sports and drama and stuff and stuff and stuff. So that's how the, the bug sort of like, so I'm, 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 I'm at my father's side of life. Mm. I witnessed drama. So when yeah. I go and visit my mother's side, <laughs> I also witnessed drama. <laughs> So you marinate in drama. And yes, it, it, yes. There's no other choice but to go for that route, right? Yeah. But then at that time as well, I need to mention this so that it becomes clear. I love this part of the story. Yeah. So in 1980, something very big happened in my life. Mm -hmm. There was a, a famous band called the Soul Brothers. Okay. So they came to Gangwane Hall. Ah which is the hall in my village. Mm -hmm. And I watched them. And their dance moves, man, they mesmerized me, you know? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, this is gonna this be is the it. new me. Yeah. So I went into that park for a while. And then the following Wait, year- the dancing or the singing? Uh, both. Oh, both. okay. Yeah, both. But not more of the singing because, I mean, it's called imitating. Yeah. You know, so it's more or less the dance moves and stuff. And then the following year, a much bigger thing happened again. Okay? okay. So now I saw the first play on stage, professional. I've seen sketches. Yeah. But uh, I've never seen a, 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 a full-blown play done by professionals. Mm. So there's an actor that we... 
we all remember as Zegma Tabane from Isidimbo. Yes. Yeah, he was playing in the player Gibson Kent called No Peace in the Family. Mm. I remember I watched that play and I, I saw there were other actors, but I never looked at any of those actors. I looked at him straight wow. from the beginning until the end. And yeah. that's when I made a decision that I want to be like Le Khrotman. Mm. Yeah. And how old were you at that time? Uh, well, I was oh, how young? nearing 10. Uh -huh. I was nearing 10 uh -huh. at that time, yeah. Yeah, I was nearing 10. I think, yeah, I was nearing 10. So, speaking of that era, I know that Blood Not touches a lot on race, race and the racial disparities. And in as much as you were growing up during that time, did you also experience the life in the slums or how did you experience um, the disparities that were caused by apartheid during, um, during that, that period when you were experiencing yeah. um, a theatre when? No, the thing is, the thing is as, a, as a kid, you, 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 you don't see all of those things. Yeah. Uh, I, I will tell you a very beautiful story around that. Yeah. So my mother for all the years she used to work for the ellerins brothers mm. you know so she started working for them in Devon, and then she got a transfer because she was married now in nelspreet mm. so they transferred her to nelspreet mm. so across the the, the 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 furniture shop where my mother worked ellerins across there was a white kind of uh, restaurant mm. but not restaurant it's like itilom uh, in Donitilum. Itilum is a tea room. Oh. You know, and uh, it's, 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 it's closer to the railway station. You know, it was called the coffee age. Okay. So, I, I remember as, as a kid, you know, but I didn't, like, take it for anything. Mm. Because I, I thought me, I had access. Okay. Right. So, my mother used to write me a note mm. with her signature. And then I will go to Coffee Ace mm -hmm. and I will give this to the owner who is a white man. Yeah. I will give it to him and he will sit me on the corner mm -hmm. and he will give me everything that I that is written in on the, the paper. List. Yeah. You know. Because every time that I go to visit my mother at work, it's either you going for Christmas clothes, right? But you have to wait for her. You, you know, to make go, off. Yeah. yeah. So you stay there the whole time. <laughs> because I can't leave the township on my own. Mm -hmm. So I leave in the morning with her. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I live with her and I go to work with her. Then comes a break time. She wouldn't take break because she wants to knock off early. Ah. So that she can take me to the famous uh, PG or, 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 or in those sales house, you know, to go and buy clothes. Yeah. Right. So I would sit there lunchtime and then the, 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 the old man would sit me on the corner and I, I could see, I mean, I was a kid and I thought like, Maybe it's because I'm, 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 I'm a jolly kid. Yeah. That is why all these white people who are sitting there eating, mm. they are all constantly taking Looking a glance at, at me. You, yeah. you know. But he never had a problem with it. And mm. then I, even later, in later years, the, when I came to Joburg and I started working, I went there again, you know, mm. to Coffee Ace. And I ordered food and I sat and I ate, you know. And I thought, like, this reminds me so clearly of my childhood. Yeah. So you, you don't experience those things until there's a riot inside mm. the township now. And then you see, that's when you start to see... It how, becomes vivid. Yeah, it becomes very clear now how we've been treated. Mm. And uh, how we've been treated by both uh, the difference between the, the white soldier or stroke policeman and mm. the white policeman stroke black policeman. Mm. So they would treat us differently, you yeah. know, because uh, the black policeman will hit us, but up to a point where they have to withdraw a bit mm. and the whites mm. will go further and further. And further. So they would extend mercy to you guys, yes. which is something that the white police wouldn't, would, wouldn't, wouldn't do. do. Yeah. So if you can check on all the clips of the struggle, I mean, even mm. the, the June 16, 1976 clips, you see a young boy like this being shambled by this white policeman yeah. so bad that he goes onto a barbed wire fence and then he rolls and then they do all these merciless things mm. on them. You know, so that's when you start to realize. And you experience all of those things. When do we come or when do you as Metis come to a point where you're like, okay, now I am at peace and we can have this rainbow, um, almost 
idealistic nation <laughs> where we can yeah. now come together, having experienced the brutality of the white policemen um, yeah. and having experienced the segregation, um, even though it was mild, but you saw it, you saw the fact that yeah. there were differences. How do sure. you come to a point where you even embrace the idea of a rainbow democracy? Uh, for me, it's, it's, it's beyond embracing because embracing, it means you have to compromise. Yeah. You know, but when, when I arrived at the lab, we had a teacher called Irene Stefano. Mm. And um, she, she was doing a class called Theater and Life. Mm. So that is where now both the blacks and the whites will yeah. sit in class mm -hmm. and talk, mm. you know, and talk. So that's the class that teaches you to be tolerant. Because I studied at the lab, it was for me yeah. the first multiracial experience. Mm, mm. You know, I was in class with uh, white students <laughs> for the first time. For the first time, and you know, then language comes to play as yeah. well. And uh, the, I, I remember there was an incident, which was the only incident that happened actually in my class mm. was me wanting to stab a white boy with a pair of scissors. Mm, what had happened? Yeah, because this guy, uh, it's, 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 it's the, the English word because it's called sarcasm. Ah. Yeah, so <laughs> I... We don't gel well with that I, way. I don't, I don't, even today, one. I don't <laughs> take it kindly <laughs> because it's sitting on very kind of like Shaky a topsy-turvy type mm. of situation. Mm. I don't like that, you know, because then uh, it's like, it's like, for me, it becomes satire to my, to my uh, a unique situation. Oh, okay. We are in a unique situation as black people. Yeah. We are being dispossessed, you know. So for me to make sarcasm around that <laughs> and expect me to laugh, no. I, I don't think it will sit well yeah. with me. Yeah. So it struck a chord. Yeah, it struck a chord, you mm. know. And, um, it's, it's, a, it's a thing that uh, always is a reminder that, I mean, you, you, you find people saying, now nah, we're born free, we're with what, 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 yeah. and then they go to these schools and they are reminded that, no, you must know your place, Tozama. It, it, as much as your, 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 your ruling party's organization, yeah. you know, but you are not white, you're black. Mm. Yeah. And I think we, we still have those reminders even today. And I mean, I come from the generation that is on the other side of the fence that yeah. always feels like, oh, we are born free. Yeah. Um, but it takes, I think, what was important and what I take away is the conversation, though, in as much as there are going to be a rage, raging emotions, yeah. you know, but conversation becomes so important. And sure. I think that's why the conversation that Arthur Fugard also started around um, Blood Knot yeah. and with Blood Knot was yeah. very important. And yeah. what what is your take on the actual play and, and, and what it means and what it meant even for South Africa at the time? Yeah, this is, this is one hell of a protest. <laughs> yeah, uh, this protest about the play Blood Not being staged in 1961, yeah. when South African apartheid laws wouldn't permit a black person and a white person to be on the same stage, mm. let alone the, the disgust mm. of sharing a dressing room. Mm. <laughs> you know I mean? mm. Oh, there, so, there was that as well. Yeah, yeah, there was that. It happened quite a lot here. Mm. Yeah. So for me, that's the, the biggest premise that uh, Atoll wrote it very, very clearly mm. that he was going to play the role himself and another black guy will play the role and they are brothers mm. in the play right and uh, they will give you their reasons why they are brothers yeah you know and they are the reasons because i don't know when uh, why and where but you you, you, can, you have to read it you know, between lines in the yeah. play because i don't think it would have been allowed for him to say it bluntly yeah. back then yeah so for the fact that Atoll was going to play uh, morris and, and zex mukai was going to play zakaria yeah it's a statement on its mm. own it's a big 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 statement mm. so there is nothing that's bigger than that yeah so cut now to now in 2021 which is how many years later 60. 61 to be precise 61 years later then the play is restaged at the market. Mm. 
you know, and I'm playing Zakaria and Francois is playing Maurice. Mm. What has changed? What has is, changed? Is the so landscape. That is, that is a good question. Yeah, because the landscape is still the same. It's still the same country. Yeah. And uh, the laws might have changed, but it's not people's perceptions. You know? mm. People's perceptions haven't changed. You much. think? No, no, no. They haven't changed. Why do you say that? Um, uh, for, for one, I was, I am actually a, a person or an, an artist or whatever that has experienced the height of apartheid mm. and the beginning of democracy yeah. in the same sentence. Mm. And that's confusing. <laughs> you know, it's confusing. And I remember the role of NGOs, you know, back then, like in the early 90s after Bomandela, they came out of prison then NGOs were active now mm. and say like we're gonna open the center for the study of violence in Bramfontein. I got involved in that, you know, mm. we, you know. So there were many things that were happening in those days okay. just to keep the anger down. You know what I'm saying? So the anger needed to be calm yeah. so that we can all function as normal people. But the race is still the same. Yeah. You know, if and I let the disparities are still the same, look, the differences I, are still the I same. I always say this. This is Ganyamazani. Mm -hmm. This is Nelsville. Yeah. This is Valencia Park. Mm -hmm. This is Snellsprit. Mm. So look who's far from everything. It's me here yeah. in Ganyamazani. These are our colored brothers. These are our Indian brothers. These are our white brothers. Mm. I'm still far. Yeah. You know. And nothing has changed here. Nothing. The setup is still the same. Right. Except for what we perceive about, I guess, apartheid itself and maybe the differences between white and black. See, now, for me, that's not my reality. My reality <laughs> is not apartheid. What my is my reality is, is affording. Yeah. That's my reality. Is that yeah. black people still stay far away from work mm -hmm. and they can't afford. Yeah. You know, that's my reality. And yeah. I mean, the reality we grow up it is like you wake up in the morning, you see a train at Murafi mm -hmm. station. It's like already there are people hanging outside. Yeah. You know, and it's so dangerous. But they know that by six o'clock they need to be in town mm -hmm. at work. So uh, let's say the political landscape yeah. has changed, mm -hmm. you know, because we, we, we can marry each other across color lines, yeah. across yeah. races, across whatever, we can marry each other. We can stay in the same neighborhood. Mm. But then for me, as a black person, to stay in a white neighborhood, I really, really need to afford. Yeah. You know, yeah, I really in a particular to. class yeah. as well. To absolutely afford. Yeah. And... And when you look back at our own uh, community as black people, it's like every day we're plunging into poverty yeah. in droves and droves and droves and droves and droves. So this is what the play is addressing, mm -hmm. is that um, Zachariah has worked mm -hmm. at this amusement park, at the gate for many years. He started in the kitchen washing pots. Yeah. He was getting old, he's getting slow there to kick him out, and then they did him a favor to make him stand at the gate all day long with his feet killing him. So how many of those that we have today? Do we even know? Because I think we know a lot of those people. We sure. left a lot of those people even back at home. Sure. Yeah, those are our uncles, our... Exactly. You know, yeah, we know mm. that they are not getting the right deal in life, <laughs> you know. So there's, there's so many factors that the play uh, addresses. I yeah. mean, it, it also addresses, I mean, uh, I, I'll make an example with one of the characters in the story, Ethel Dilan. Mm. You know, she's a bure, a bure girl, a yeah. bure Macy from Ots Warren. I've always wanted to ask, why was Zakaria interested in, in, in a white woman? No, the thing, the thing, the, the, the beauty about, about, about Fugat's writing yeah. is that he makes your problematic characters naive, ah. you know. So, one, Zakaria can read, can yes. write. Yes. Right. <laughs> and it doesn't read, and anything doesn't read mm. to, to Zakaria's uh, 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 lifestyle. So, you, you can compare Zakaria to actually Robert Zwellinzim and Siswe Banzi State. Mm -hmm. He's the same character. He can't read, he can't write, and 
he, he, he's a practical man. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know what? Uh, if if I take this passbook and burn it, I'm gonna go to home affairs and I'm gonna ask for a new one. Then I can work. Mm. No, it doesn't work like, like that. that. If this passbook is stamped that you you can't be here, it means the other one that yes. comes with it is gonna be stamped again that you can't be here. This these are recorded stuff. He says no. Practically, I can bend this one and get, and a, get new a new one, one. which is clean. With, <laughs> without the And and Zakaria says, uh, Morris says, look at the picture. He says, I've seen the picture. Mm. You know, he said, look again. He says, this is Ethel. Mm. You know, he says, yeah, but Ethel is a white woman. He says, how do you know? <laughs> how do you know? <laughs> Very practical man indeed. And then he looks at the picture. He thinks like, oh yeah, Ethel is white. What's wrong? Because she has written to me back. Mm -hmm. It means she likes me. There's no color in it. I wrote to Ethel and I told her I'm Zakaria Peterson. She wrote back to me. She says, I received your letter. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep on writing to Ethel. Yeah. Okay. So it's practical like mm. that. So that's what makes the play interesting because the character doesn't know. Yeah. But if Zakaria was Maurice, mm -hmm. then the play would finish upon the receiving of the person. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Is that? Do you think that's what makes Zakaria so layered? Um, yeah. He's because I think you, you you don't predict his next move. You don't know what his ne next move is going yeah. to be. Whereas the learned guy is almost like very predictable in 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 his sure. way. How do you play that multi layered? Uh, characterization of Uzakaria when I can go as a Mnatisi, as an actor. And I think because you thoroughly understand the journey that he has to go through, but mm. how do you get into um, portraying and giving us the layers? Because we, we haven't read the play, we don't know what it is, but yeah. how do you ensure that as I'm sitting in the auditorium, I get exactly what kind of a man he is? Okay, so now what Fuga does with his characters is that you, you, you don't step into their intentions, mm. you know. Got that? Because I think there's someone who's studying the play, and <laughs> I no, think this is a great point. You don't point step into their intentions. It. Because once you step in their intentions, you make them high, high characters. Mm. They are not high, high mm. characters. Okay. So it's, it's psychological. Mm. You know, so, so you play the psychology. So if you play the psychology of the uh, of the of the character, mm -hmm. then you stand a good chance to open so many doors. Mm. So what I do all the time when I when I step into such roles is that I I, I, I throw away the physicality, I throw away the beliefs or whatever, whatever. Mm. I look at his psychology. Yeah. Then Zakaria's psychology is simple. If he likes something, he commits. <laughs> if he hates something, he flips. Yeah. If he likes something, he commits. If he hates something, he flips. Mm. So he keeps on collecting all the things that he likes mm. and flipping all the things that he don't like. Mm. And then the contrast of this is that everything that he thinks is liking are actually the wrong things. And all the things that he's throwing away are the right, right. things for him. Yeah. You see, so that's what makes it interesting for me. Because now once the realization comes that, oh, yeah. I've been throwing in all the good things and keeping yeah. all the wrong things, how do I now start to recollect my life again? Mm. You know, so that's what makes it an interesting mm. character. Yeah. But also makes him very relatable. Yeah, because I sure. think it as much as sometimes we think we're so far removed from the man that yeah. he is. Yeah. Uh, most of us are quite sure. similar. How Going similar, how different is Zakaria from Metis? For me, acting is because at the end of the day, it's Mnetis that's going to work on this thing. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So, Zakaria would never come by himself. Never. Yeah. So, Zakaria is me for mm -hmm. that particular moment. Mm -hmm. I'm Zakaria. Because I'm going to use Mnetis' voice. I'm going to use Mnetis' emotions and feelings. I'm going to use Mnetis' eyes and body. I'm going to use Mnetis' gestures to actually... Uh, tell Zakaria's story, yeah. you know. So that's what many people are missing when it mm. comes to acting, mm. you know, because you, you, you can't act. Yeah, It has to be real. This is a person. He, he must leave. Mm. So the, the, the only way for the, the person to leave is for me to embody them and say, for yeah. now, for this one hour, two hours, I'm going to be Zakaria. I'm going to think like Zakaria. Zakaria doesn't think like him. Notice, notice, it disappears, disappears. Zakaria, mm -hmm. come, 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 mm -hmm. come, come. Mm -hmm. And you go through that whole ritual and boom, you go on stage and you forgot about yourself. Mm -hmm. You're thinking Zakaria now. Zakaria is coming from work. He's been standing at the gate. White people are looking down upon him, you know, and and yeah and they 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 talk like rubbish to him yeah. you know his stomachs all of that and then the bell rings he closes the gates of the amusement park 
he goes home. Mm. And then he goes home. So that is his routine. Yeah. I don't have a routine as much as uh, I'm, I'm all over. You know, I'm there and there and there and there and there. Yeah. You know? So it's, it's all there that, that you need to just embrace the fact that you, you, for, for, for that particular period, you, you're going to be thinking differently to yourself. Mm. And uh, once you embody the spirit of the character, even your gestures, naturally they change. Mm. You know, even your speech patterns, naturally they change. Yeah. Because you are not thinking like yourself, mm. you know. So if, you, if I had to think like him, that is, I know I'm going to be like this and like this and like that. Yeah. I actually love that because when we began the conversation, I asked you why you think you have longevity and you said that discipline. So discipline can't be the only thing that makes you different because I think I see a lot of actors who are on screen right now who are famous and yeah, who want true. to be known for being famous and acting. But when I listen to you now, there's an element that is a little bit beyond, that goes beyond just discipline, yeah. you know, in order for you to, to be able to deliver a, a fully rounded character character that is alive yeah. and speak to me about why you've always shied away from being the famous face and wanting to be known just for your craft um i i came from serious humble beginnings mm. and acting is one of the most humbling things that can ever happen to mankind so because we we we, we always say we are one with nature yeah. You know, and uh, I've seen birds flying up in the air and shitting on us, yeah. you know, but when they are hungry, they come down. Mm. I've been in a plane from Johannesburg to New York. It ran out of fuel. It has to stop in Dakar and <laughs> refuel. <laughs> so there is nothing permanent up there. <laughs> ah, I love that. Nothing is permanent. Up, up there, there, there is nothing permanent. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> I can tell you now, I can tell you now, I, I surround myself with, with friends who are art lovers and art collectors oh. who are not in the arts, you know, and they always remind me that Tamne, what you're doing, my brother, mm. is not permanent. Mm. It's a temporary job. Mm. Mm. So be aware with that all the time. Yeah. So that one day, it will fail or it didn't see it. <laughs> and if it did. And it did. Yes. Yeah. 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 So can you imagine if I created myself a bubble mm. that I'm now, because mm. I'm, I'm now the lead, my name comes first. Yeah. It's on top of the entire list and I've just arrived. Mm. So I've created a bubble for myself and I'm untouchable. I'm the biggest actor this world has ever seen. Mm. Where would I be right now? I will first I will be hiding somewhere yeah, because I'm behind ashamed. that ivory tower. Yeah. Yes, now I'm ashamed <laughs> to come and face my reality. Yeah, you know because people will say, "Oh, where's that tamne? Where's the bubble?" <laughs> you know, nesizu langi tintiwa sobo shamanyos. Yeah, so I've always, I've always as an actor, I I I created this thing that I call shame. Mm. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm always ashamed, you know, that I need to do one thing. And then when people come back to watch me again, they shouldn't see the same thing. Okay. Because then it means I'm not ashamed. Mm -hmm. I'm just opening my suitcase of tricks and I'm putting it on the table. Yeah. I don't work hard. You know, so I just recycle whatever, whatever, whatever is there. So I try by all means, you know, to remain an actor. Yeah. more than anything else yeah how do we make sure that um that kind of thinking about acting and art is passed down to a younger generation of actors put yeah. like this? Uh, education first and uh, but i would like to call it schooling mm. schooling schooling helped me a lot and uh, I'm not just talking about academia or yeah. drama school and whatnot. Because that's what we're about nowadays. Like yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Me, I was taught by the late Ramla Omaken. Mm. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a matter of being at the right place at the right time. Yeah. I started here at the, at the lab. Theater. 
yeah, <laughs> yeah. And humbling as it was back then, I would say the class that I was in and the previous class before me yeah. were the most luckiest classes. Why was that? Because we were taught by actors who were practicing here mm. at the market theater, people that we saw in plays and people that were actually telling us yeah. that, look, don't envy what you see of me, mm. right? Mm. Don't, mm. because I'm not the bigger picture. Yeah. Mandela has gone out of prison now. Mm. We've ran out of apartheid stories. Mm. So now it's your turn now to tell the new story. And what is it? Mm. Uh, I remember the, four, the whole first year, I couldn't even do one single monologue in class. Yeah. Uh, Ramla, I, 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 would, I would stand up, I would say the first sentence, and then you shout at the back, say, Kak! Oh, wow. And if Ramla says Kak, it means yes, get out no. of the stage. <laughs> That's what it means. Kak means get out of the stage. Wow. So for the entire year, Kak was set on me. Kak. Mm. And I, I went out and I, I didn't take anything like Personate. personal. I, I said, he's teaching me something. Yeah. Ooh. And then one day I went on stage and he went quiet. And then my friends, who were always the excellent people in class, went on stage and he said, Kak. So I, I went home that night and I looked at myself and I did a reflection. It's like, what is it that I was doing wrong all this time? And what is it that I've gotten right now mm -hmm. that it doesn't say cuck to me anymore? Mm. Mm. And when I arrived at home, I got a call from the school. Yeah. They want to see me tomorrow morning. I'm like, I've graduated already. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? You know what I'm saying? Mm. I got scared because I'm from Nell Spring. I don't know how these things work. I thought maybe they made a mistake to give me a pass. <laughs> and they were to because I didn't do, it's a literally I didn't do anything first year. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I went there and then Ramula was there. And Vanessa Cook was there. Mm. And Ramula was telling Vanessa, not asking Vanessa, was telling Vanessa that this boy's story, mm. it must go into the residence next year. It's going to be a resident project. I'm going to mentor him. He will develop this story into a full play. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I went home excited, you know, like, ah. I made wow, it. This is interesting. <laughs> I actually the whole Ramula, the whole cat guy. <laughs> wow, he's going to be mentoring me. So I realized that what was Ramula was interested in me, he said to me, when we are from Nelspreet mm. and you are caught up in this web mm. of Johannesburg because you are friends of all these guys who are from well, Johannesburg. From, yeah, yeah. And if you look at their stories, they are the same. Mm. And when you are sitting on the potential to tell a completely different story. So that's oh. why I like your story because we've never seen that story before. Mm. And that story now, that short story now, mm. it's published. Oh, yeah? Yeah, uh, it's published. And um, uh, I worked with Nikim Klong in rewriting it. And what is he, the name? <laughs> and then he edited it for me uh, quite beautifully. And uh, it's coming out this month. Oh! So by, by the end of next week, I should have a copy myself. And it's being Very launched kindly. on the 6th of, uh, of November in Bramfontein. Oh my God! So this is a very timely conversation as well. To very, also very remind timely. you yeah. of the the time. It's just a coincidence that <laughs> I just got the information last night. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. Speaking of alignment, speaking of alignment, do you feel that your journey has always been um, aligned? There's always been a divine order to to your journey and how everything is supposed to happen in your life. Um, I suspect. Yeah. Uh, one, of, <laughs> one of the things that used to happen with me growing up is that uh, I, I, my, my father's side is too many, is my, my grandfather and my grandmother had too many children. Yeah. And then these children had too many grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> it's bound to happen. <laughs> yeah. So there was a point where I was staying alone at home. So there were no kids. It's only me and the bloody TV, and the bloody video, yeah. and the bloody fridge with everything in the fridge. I mean, I, my, my mother could buy 
uh, uh, Russians, Vienna, yeah. eggs, fish fingers, you know, that kind of a family. Yeah, yeah. You know. So I would migrate to and go to, <laughs> yeah, I would migrate, leave home and go and live in my grandmother's house. Yeah. And in my grandmother's house, it was serious adventure. <laughs> you know, I had an uncle who was sleeping in the kitchen. <laughs> you know, I had another uncle sleeping in the dining room. You know, yeah. and it was, it was very Adventure chaotic life. and adventurous, you know, <laughs> with the grandmother's cold stove, yeah. you know, chopping wood and putting it there. But you still know you're going to be fed. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, fed. yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean it's, 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 it's running away from all these nice things at home. Yeah. So you know that the sweet potato is going to go into the cold stove there and you'll just hear the sound going, boom, boom, you know, and you know that it's going to come out and you're all going to get a piece and it's, you know, it's yeah. well baked. So it was that kind, and then but the interaction as well with the other kids, you know. Yeah. There was this huge interaction, and Makoko will tell us stories, you know, would laugh and stuff and stuff and stuff. Yeah. So in the midst of that, out of all of us, my grandmother never called me by my name. Oh, wow. She always referred to me as Shaman. Shaman. Then. I didn't know because I was young, but then, then years later, when I was in high school now, and I was doing all sorts of like, you know, teenagers, we out of order, out of order, out of order, and my grandmother say, hey, Lala pass Shabam, Naskulum. In daughter, I one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Mm. And she, she used to speak to me like an adult. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I sort of. You know, in theater circles, people used to call it, hey, look, he's got such presence on yeah. stage. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's very intimidating acting with him because it's such presence. Yeah. But for me, it was not about, it's not about presence yes. because you can't buy presence. Mm. You know, you can't mm. get it from an acting school, mm. you know. Mm. So it, it actually kind of verified for me that I, I never walk alone. Mm. We have all the time in the Tuelabushabang, in And... Uh, they appreciate what I do so much that they are always there for me. Mm. Yeah. So even in the story I was telling you about, you, you will get to understand a certain portion yeah. of my spiritual life. Ah. Yeah. That oh. is actually captured very clear because it's all very about clear. that. There was somebody who was trying to temper with that. Yeah. And then something happened. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I can't wait. I actually can't wait to get my hands on that book because I think there are so many nuggets uh, and yeah. stories that we can also glean from. Because I think um, we don't really tend to accept the fact that we are different. Yeah. And I think our difference then becomes the thing that's, that makes us us. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I think that's what I'm, I got from you and that's yeah. what I'm getting from you. And I think it's very important. But before we go, I want us to talk um, about Blood Knot. Are we still on? Who should come and see the show? Yeah, Blood Knot is still on uh, uh, from Tuesdays to Sundays. And then Tuesdays to Saturdays, it's at 7 p.m. Yeah. And only on Sundays, it's at 3 p.m. Yeah. And then we're running until the 14th of November. Mm -hmm. So this is the beauty about uh, who must come and who must not. Yes. So yes, yes. <laughs> we, 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 we've been having quite a, a lot of young people, especially on the weekends. Oh. You know, yeah, coming on dates. <laughs> and it's, it, it's, it's, it's for them a razzmatazz. Mm. It's a very serious razzmatazz. Mm. And uh, I mean, they come here and, and most of them, because I mean, when you say it's the play that was written during apartheid time, so they expect. Yes, yes. And so probably because there's no surge, you know, so they relax even ah. more and enjoy the two men talking, you know. This is a play for everybody. For everyone. It's a play for everyone, yeah. And the young people, they are vocal with it because they, 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 I mean, I mean, one thing that strikes the chord about, about young people is yeah. like, Oh, damn. I mean, I mean, that's Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, you do, you guys, like old people are so, so, so outdated. So this is what their version of Facebook was wow, back right? then. Yes. They used to write to each other letters, yes. pen pals. <laughs> you know, no, that's Facebook. DMs. Yes. We're DMs yes. nowadays. So it's basically that. So it strikes a chord and it's like, 
So it's a reflection. It's the same medium, right? Yeah, but it's done different. I mean, yeah. this one relied on a post office. This one relies <laughs> on data. You know. So it, they they enjoy these characters a yeah. lot, a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so, so much for allowing me into the set of Flat Knot and into your space. Yeah. I am invigorated and I think changed. And I hope that yours has been changed as well. As he said, Flat Knot is still playing at the Market Theatre from now until the 14th of November. We are giving away a Blood Knot t-shirt. So if you want to get your t-shirt, please answer a very simple question, which is where and when was Umnati Sishabangu born. Answer that on the comment section down below and you might walk away with a Blood Knot t-shirt specifically signed by, or specially signed by uh, the maestro himself. Do you know that Zig Zimda actually calls you the maestro of theater? Yes, <laughs> I, uh, I know for a fact where that name comes from. So this name comes from me. I had an opportunity in 2012. We were going to do uh, a cinema here at the market. I was just doing was a Albert. So I decided to take the cast of a cinema and the director to go and visit Pesim Tua in David. Ah. You know, and, um, uh, and then I've read Pesim Tua's biography mm. that uh, Pesim Tua, in fact, they were the dancers when Pesim Sledge came mm. to South Africa. So yeah. he belonged to a dance group yeah. of that time. So when Percy Sledge left, mm -hmm. Percy was left with a bed and called it Percy and the Maestro. Oh. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because then uh, he, he, he danced next to uh, Percy Sledge, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, yeah, so they said, you are Percy and your group are the Maestros. Maestros yeah. So I always referred to him as a Maestro until that day he called me into order. Oh. He said, no, uh. you, Netisi, are the Maestro. And in front of all these guys. Wow. So on our way back, you know, people are like, hey, maestro, hey, maestro, <laughs> hey, maestro, hey, maestro. And then it got stuck with me. Ah, because he commented on one of our things and he was like, I can't wait to see the maestro, but he, he, he is not in the country and I wish he was, but you are in the country and yeah. if you are around Joburg, Pretoria, so where to wherever you are, it's a show for literally everyone. Gather around, let's come in. It's a theatre in the round around the fire come in and let's enjoy south african theater this has been beyond the story i am toza mapusako and this is mighty sishabango is there anything that you want to say before i go